Hello, this is a guide for the Mercenary Neptune. I'll be going over how the Mercenary works, how to build them, and most importantly, how to use them. Neptune is a Legend Rarity Warrior with a specific classification of her being a Slayer with a unique utility built in. Neptune has a front attack type with her AoE tiles being a 1x5 line. I will now talk about her skills at max rank. Her first skill is named Giant Wave. This skill is Neptune's main utility. When she attacks, the main target of her AoE gets pushed back 4 tiles. Moreover, if the shove enemy collides with another, both will receive the sweep debuff, which is essentially an unblockable stun. Here are a few examples to help you get a better grasp of how the push mechanic works. In the first example, Neptune will push Lucius back 4 tiles because he is the main target of the attack. However, Lucius cannot be fully pushed back 4 tiles because Leatherkrat blocks the path. Therefore, Lucius will stop right in front of Leatherkrat and both of them will receive the sweep debuff. In the second example, again, Neptune will push Lucius back 4 tiles because he is the main target of the attack. However, just like the first example, Lucius cannot be fully pushed back the 4 tiles because Leatherkrat is standing right behind Lucius. So therefore, Lucius does not move and both will receive the sweep debuff. In this third example, Neptune will again push Lucius backwards 4 tiles, but in this case, Leatherkrat is no longer blocking the path, and thus, Lucius will be pushed back the full 4 tiles. However, both of them will not receive the sweep debuff due to not colliding with one another. And finally, in this last example, Neptune will again push Lucius back 4 tiles, but this time he will collide with the wall, and therefore, he will still receive the sweep debuff. So to summarize this move mechanic, Neptune will push the main target of her attack backwards 4 tiles and apply the sweep debuff if the main target collides with something. If that something is another enemy, both will receive the sweep debuff. If that something is the end of a formation or a grave, only the shove target will receive the sweep debuff. Her second skill is named Sea Purification. This skill removes buffs that the enemy applied during battle. However, she does not remove buffs off defenders. Her third skill is named Corrupted Sea. This skill deals an instance of direct damage and HP consumed damage that both scale off Neptune's additional HP. Additional HP is the screen number next to the mercenary's HP stat, and you can increase it by giving the mercenary a larger stat boost to their HP value, via runes, soul gear, insignia of creed, and etc. Her fourth skill is named Sea Circulation. This skill gives Neptune HP Restraint, which restrains the maximum incoming damage she can receive to only deal a portion of her max HP. Additionally, this skill allows Neptune to pass her turn over to the next ally after she attacks, since usually, after a mage caster's spell to deal damage, the turn order would be passed to the enemy. For her skill level, I'll quickly run down the most important ones. Plus 7 is solid due to increasing her tankiness, now requiring 4 hits to take her out. Plus 9 is incredibly valuable due to increasing the number of tiles the enemy is pushed back to 2 tiles. Plus 10 is also nice due to again increasing her tankiness, now requiring 5 hits to take her out. Plus 12 is another very strong power spike for her due to again increasing the number of tiles the enemy is pushed back to 3 tiles. Plus 13 is not bad as it increases her AoE tiles to a 1x5, allowing her to reach one more squishy target. And finally, plus 15 is of course her best power spike, since at this skill level, Neptune would push the enemy back a solid 4 tiles back. In my opinion, the easiest skill spike you could get on Neptune is her plus 10 due to the availability of books and fate gifts. But for her to be viable in Arena, she needs to be at minimum plus 12, since this enables Neptune to be more consistent due to the upgraded push distance. However, honestly, plus 15 is what her skill level should be at, as this upgrade would max out her push distance, allowing for enemies to always be clumped up together when she hits them. For runes, the optimal setup would be 1 flat HP rune with a subset of HP% percent, and 1 HP% percent rune with a subset of flat HP. Additionally, both runes should be at minimum 6 star runes with an epic plus rarity, as well as their stats being equal to or higher than the one presented on screen. For a mythic rune, the optimal setup would be to run either a penetration and HP% percent mythic rune, or penetration and a flat HP mythic rune. With either choice, their subset should be flat HP or HP%, percent. though don't worry if you don't have this subset, it's not make or break. For Insignia of Creed, I wouldn't recommend getting them as it's quite expensive at 900 diamonds per slot, or 1 legend book per slot, and insignias aren't necessary for her to perform well. However, if you do have the diamonds or books to burn, then her insignia should be the following. Star Guardian, Thousand Year Training, Giant Strength, and for the last two slots, any insignia that has flat HP or HP% percent works. For her soul gear, I would recommend leveling them all up to be level 10 just for that one additional skill level. I also recommend upgrading her armor and amulet to level 25 for that additional HP boost. And lastly, if you upgrade her amulet to level 25, I would highly recommend refining her amulet stats to be any combination of HP. For rank boosting Neptune, I would recommend it as it gives her a nice HP boost as well as being quite cheap to do. Neptune's main purpose is to group enemies together using your unique push ability to enable the next mage to deal great collateral damage. Overall, the best team to put her in is the mage team, as mages will capitalize the most from her ability to group enemies. Now for her pros and cons. For pros, Neptune deals decent damage even with a moderate amount of HP. Combining the fact that her damage is direct and HP consume allows her to reliably one-shot squishies, even ones that use HP restraint as their main defense. She also has a buff remove skill which is effective at removing Rise Immortality and Mary White's professional HP, allowing Neptune's damage to not be ignored. Her tankiness is also somewhat threatening due to requiring 5 instances of damage to kill her. However, honestly, this is quite easy to achieve and she will most likely be 1 or 2 shot. The best part about her kit is honestly her main gimmick, pushing enemies around. This is because pushing enemies combined with her ability to turn pass allows her to combo with other mages. For example, Neptune can push Ida back to collide with Lucius. And due to Neptune's turn pass, she would pass her turn over to Freyla, allowing her to hit everyone in this rectangle, including Ida. As without Neptune, Ida wouldn't be hit by Freyla's AoE. However, some cons is that Neptune is comically and incredibly easy to counter with a well-placed taunt tank. 
If the Taunting is placed at the very back of the formation, which they should be at, not only Neptune can't kill them, but also her push is pretty much useless. It's very important to note that Neptune does not have Taunt Ignore, which is especially bad specifically only for her due to her tiles only affecting one lane at a time. Additionally, I was surprised to see that Neptune has no immunities, which makes her very vulnerable to CC effects from Velfern and Claudia. Also, even though I said that in the pros section, the best part about her kit is her push gimmick, it's really not that impressive due to her weak AoE tiles. Pushing enemies is a very cool mechanic, but honestly, it'd be more effective if you just, you know, kill your enemy with more damage. You really don't need all that gimmicky setup. I would also like to mention that even though her sweep CC is completely unblockable, it only lasts a short 6 turns. Additionally, due to the fact that Neptune is a front attacking mage, she'll most likely be stunning a defender that probably doesn't care that they're stunned, or support that doesn't really matter if they're stunned or not. The fact that Neptune can only CC two targets at a time, as well as those two targets likely not caring if they're stunned, on top of the stun only lasting six turns, makes her CC incredibly weak even though it's completely unblockable. And lastly, Neptune requires a solid amount of investment to be worth using. She needs to be at minimum plus 12 to be viable in Arena due to her plus 11 and below barely pushing the enemies together. Even still, her plus 12 can fall short sometimes, which makes plus 15 really the only viable skill level she can be at at high elo arena. For some synergies, Neptune's top synergy is Noble Sacrifice Eda, since when she is sacrificed, she applies spell memorization to all of your mages. This is great for Neptune as you can have her act first to push all the enemies together, then you can have the next mage follow up and deal collateral damage all in the first few turns. If you don't plan on using Noble Sacrifice Eda, another excellent synergy is using Venus and Indra together, as you can perform a similar feat as Noble Sacrifice Eda. You can have Venus target Neptune to push the enemies together, then have Indra charge up the follow up mage. This is a great alternative to Noble Sacrifice Eda, as Venus wouldn't unintentionally sacrifice Neptune due to her having HP restraint. Additionally, the Noble Sacrifice Eda team can be countered by the enemy having a Velfern on their team, while the Venus and Indra team is not affected. Another good support is Ride, as she is just a good support that can make your entire team pretty much invincible, so therefore she will naturally synergize with everyone, including Neptune. Just make sure to not run her in a Noble Sacrifice Eda team, as Ride can prevent her from being sacrificed. The best follow-up attackers for Neptune are Freyla and Velfern. This is because both of them have large AoE attacks that can easily deal collateral damage. For some good matchups, Neptune pretty much kills every squishy in the game without issue, however she's notably good against Mary White as she can remove the provisional HP off of warriors and then one-shot them given Neptune has a moderately high amount of HP. Neptune can also remove Ride's immortality buff, however due to Neptune's small AoE, moving Ride's immortality buff off of every enemy is an impossible task. Now onto her counters. Mercenaries that counter Neptune include literally any taunt tank, I'm not even joking. If the enemy has a taunt tank placed at the very back corner of a formation and starts taunting, they would completely ruin Neptune's whole gimmick, since there's no point in pushing an enemy if they're ready in the corner. Additionally, Neptune's damage is so incredibly mid that she can never kill a defender. Not to mention that Neptune's buff removal does not work against defenders, so she can't even remove the taunt off the taunt tank. This is by far Neptune's biggest counter. Following up on that, Neptune cannot do anything against enemies with a high amount of HP, such as Sura, Lane, Benshima, Ymir, or Valtor. Lucius's gimmick key tanking can also hold off Neptune for a long amount of time, Cecilia's AoE absorption and Letterkred copying that AoE absorption completely wipes Neptune's AoE, and absorbing Neptune's AoE is even easier since she is a front attacking mage. Freyla with provisional HP and guard can survive her damage, Claudia and Wesser can also survive her damage, and AoG Ida can also often survive Neptune's damage if she's given an immortality buff. Any CC effects such as Glacia's Freeze, Velfern's Horus Stun, Claudia's Charm, and Celia's Silence can completely shut her down if they're not removed. And lastly, any mercenary that can deal HP consume damage or 5 instant of damage in one attack can one shot her. This includes Dion, Diane, Apollo, Lakshmi, Velfern, Alec, Agni, and Yuri. And finally, the most important question of all should you build Neptune? My answer is a very affirmative no. Neptune just has way too many cons and counters that completely outweigh the benefits of running her, which is unfortunate because her push gimmick is by far the dopest, coolest, and my personal favorite mechanic they've ever added in Brave 9, and it's quite unfortunate to see it implemented with so many downsides. Overall, if you want to build a mage team, I would highly recommend you to use your resources to build better legends, such as Velfern, Lucius, or Ulfrin. Don't build Neptune, it's not necessary nor worth it. And that's all. Make sure you check the comments if I made any changes to this guide, but other than that, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer them. Thanks for watching.